This short film you're about to see, from a podcast with Marcus Pye, was shot shortly before the passing of Sir Sterling Moss, without whom the subject of this film, my book, Lap of Honour, could never have had a life. Well, we're here on a chilly morning at uh, the Goodwood Motor Circuit, and uh, I'm joined by Tim Hain, which is an absolute delight. Great to see you, Tim. Uh, you have kind of dedicated a life's worth of enthusiasm and passion for motorsport uh, and encapsulated it into a wonderful book, Lap of Honour, which uh, you published you. towards the end of last year. I mean, it is an extraordinary odyssey. It just oozes passion and quality. Well, thank you. I was initially here on a very uh, grey Easter Monday in 1962. That was my first motor race. I was very, very young. And of course, the only name on the grid that I knew was a chap called Sterling Moss. So of course, I wanted him to win. The fact that his car failed and then he had a life-changing accident was definitely a baptism by fire for me, but I was hooked. And thanks to the Duke of Richmond, I've been able to have an extended 20-year second childhood, basically, because the best days of my youth were definitely spent at uh, racetracks with a camera. We talk about the the Duke of Richmond's uh, attention to detail, but it yes. is that same incredible, incredible detail that you've brought to the, the craftsmanship of, of of the words. I love to write songs, so writing in itself and crafting words is not a is not new to me. So Tim, I'm fascinated. Were you always a musician as your kind of frontline career? Always been a musician at heart. And, and there are quite a lot of people within the motorsport world who are passionate about music. Well, that's why, you know, I had that little vision about doing a CD, writing some songs, you know, on the subject and getting people who race who, and play to play on it. How, how long did it take you to, from, from kind of the, the germination of the seed of this book to uh, getting it onto the shelves? The history of the revival, really. Meeting Sterling Moss was an incredible thing um, through a family friend and then he got in touch and invited me to his house. And I was terribly nervous on the way, you know, but the moment Susie answered the door, I felt at ease. And within minutes, I felt as if I was catching up with an old mate I hadn't seen for 38 years. I said to him, my ambition is to photograph you in as many cars as possible. Where are you going to be this year? And he said, I've got a test an old Ferrari at Silverstone on Tuesday and a Cooper at Brands on Friday. And I sensed an opportunity and said, well, would it be cheeky if I turned up and took some pictures? And he said, come with me, old boy. Just be here at, at, at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. You can come with me. Wow. So you, you, you started off with an enormous number of, of images to, to kind of whittle down into a degree, I guess, for, God, for yes. the book. And uh, kind of what sort of magnitude did you run through? Well, initially, I did find about 60 usable images. They form the first section. The Old Testament. Year. Yes, the Old Testament. And then there's the, uh, the Middle Testament, I suppose, which is all the revival years because I've been to at least one day of every revival. So from thousands down to about 600. In the old days of autosport, um, I think our photographers were allowed to take two reels of 36. It's staggering when you think about it. I mean, I used to you know, run on, you know, in the old days, two films. And if they were black and white, then by the time I was 14 or 15, I was developing and print printing them myself. Oh, that's very handy. I got Sterling to come to a studio to record much of the material that's in the book. So I turned up, again very nervously, at his house to drive him across London. Oh, wow. He was a fantastic co-driver, you know, driving down Park Lane. And he'd be going, OK, old boy, there's a Porsche coming up in the left-hand mirror. After it goes, you need to move left now. You know, and we were just <laughs> totally in sync. And it was really, really fun. And Susie later said, if he hadn't liked your driving, you'd have known about it. But I was going to say, Patrick Stewart who did that wonderful documentary, I hope you've seen, with Sterling. Mm -hmm. It's the only person on the planet, other than myself, I know, who's both been driven by Sterling and has driven him. Oh, wow. <laughs> that makes you a member of a very, very exclusive, very exclusive club. club. And he's also a member of our club, which we call it the LAF, which is short for the League of Advancing Foreheads. <laughs> Theoretically, any one of the hundreds of photographers who turned up that day in 1998 could have done this, but somehow, as I say, serendipity and I suppose a bit of my own chutzpah, chose me. Lap of Honour is a lot of fun, or as Susie would say, absolutely enchanting. Tim certainly brings back memories. Above all, his pictures are really great. What amazes me is that he's never held a press pass. I came to Goodwood for the first revival in 1998, eager to revive 
my boyhood passion for motor racing photography. All I wanted was one photograph of Sterling Moss. I never dreamed that he would get to see that photograph. I never imagined that I would end up answering the phone to arguably the greatest legend in motorsport history, calling to tell me a joke I would never tell my mother. Nor that all these years on, my book would be shortlisted for the Telegraph Illustrated Sportsbook of the Year. All thanks to Sterling Moss.